this is our OSI model broken up into our different layers. We have please do not throw sausage pizza away. Physical layer, data link layer, network layer, transport layer, session layer, presentation layer, application layer. Layer one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or of our OSI model. And overlaid on top of this OSI model, we have an example of some of our TCP IP suite protocols interacting together. So let's take a look at that. One of our TCP IP, uh, one of our TCP IP suite protocols, one of the protocols that we're going to discuss is ARP, Address Resolution Protocol. Now what Address Resolution Protocol does is it allows our computers to determine other computers on the network's physical addresses, their MAC addresses, and correlate those with their IP addresses. So ARP is sort of a layer 2.5 protocol, but we have it here in our layer 2 protocol because it allows our computer to map those network addresses to IP addresses. So, or, sorry, those IP addresses to those MAC addresses, those network layer addresses to those data link layer addresses. So we have our ARP protocol that's working in our TCP IP suite. So because without our ARP, without ARP, without address resolution protocol, our computers would have a much harder time figuring out, okay, what MAC address does this IP address equal to? What exact computer network interface card number does this IP address mean? And that's what ARP does. It, let us, it lets us know that. Now, and we also have our IP here. Now, our, our IP is our big, a big part of our TCP IP suite, and we see how it relates to a lot of our different protocols in our different layers. So we have our IP in our TCP IP suite, and on the same layer as our IP, we also have our different routing protocols we talked about. Now we mentioned in our routing, er in our routing section that our routing protocols allow our routers to work with IP addresses and find the best routes to go through to deliver packages or deliver, uh, deliver packets to certain IP addresses. So routing protocols work on the networking layer because they're routing data and they're directly working with IP addresses. They're, del they're delivering packets to particular IP addresses from particular IP addresses. So we have some of our routing protocols and this chart is missing a lot of potential. This, this chart has a lot more in-depth protocols and a lot more data that we could put on it, but we're just going to keep it simple for now. So we have our different routing protocols. On our next layer up, we have TCP and UDP on our transport layer. Now, TCP and UDP, we'll, we'll get into both of those. Um, TCP, our transmission control protocol, and UDP, our user datagram protocol, are two protocols that uh, are considered um, control protocols for how we're going to deliver packets. TCP are, is uh, receipt on delivery. Are we going to deliver these packets, and are we going to um, get a receipt when we deliver them or UDP are we just going to deliver the packets and keep delivering them and keep delivering them and keep delivering them and then hope that they get there so we have TCP and UDP and we have different protocols which are built on not only T IP but TCP or UDP and we go up and we have the session layer and application layer protocols now the reason we don't have now the reason all of these aren't connected is because all of them don't necessarily rely on other protocols. ARP is sort of down here by itself because it sort of works as an intermediary between IP addresses and MAC addresses. Sort of like we mentioned it's sort of that 2.5 layer, but we have it in our data link layer. Our routing protocols are really just going to be working at our networking layer, just going to really be working with our IP, with our IP addressing and our IP part of our TCP IP suite because they're going to be routing packets. They're really just going to be concerned with getting packets from one point to another. They don't need necessarily to be concerned with TCP or UDP because our routing protocols are just determining the best path for packets. Routing protocols aren't delivering any packets. They aren't transmitting any data other than letting our routers know what they should put in their routing tables. So we don't have them in any of our other layers. They aren't in our session layer or our application layer, and they aren't related to TCP or UDP. TCP or UDP help control how we're delivering packets of information. Then we have down here DHCP. 
Now, DHCP is our dynamic host configuration protocol. DHCP, as we've discussed earlier, allows our computer to automatically determine, OK, and what is my IP address going to be by sending out a message and receiving back a DHCP information. Now, DHCP we have in our networking category, or our networking layer, DHCP is going to provide us with um, our IP address information. But DHCP packets are delivered via UDP. Because UDP, user datagram protocol, we aren't going to verify that those DHCP packets got there. We're just going to just deliver them. We're just going to push them out. We're just going to send them. So that's why we have it off of our UDP. Now our TCP breaks off into our, now in our session layer, we have DNS. And DNS helps us to resolve our fully qualified domain names to our particular, um, our particular IP addresses or our IP addresses to our fully qualified domain names. And we want to make sure that we're getting those DNS packets. We want, to make, we want to make sure that we're receiving them properly, we're formatting them in the right order, that when we're sending and receiving packets, we're getting everything. So those are going to be based off of TCP. And they're going to be, uh, DNS is a session layer protocol. And then we have our application layer protocols, which we have a, we have a couple more for our T, TCP and UDP. For TCP, all the way up on our application layer protocol, we have POP3 and HTTP and SSH and several others that we don't have written here. Uh, POP3 is a protocol which helps to manage how we're receiving email, our emails to our email accounts or to our email servers. So POP3 is going to be an application layer protocol because application layer protocols, which we've talked about before, manage how particular applications, how particular, pro how particular programs um, are allowed to communicate with the network, are allowed to uh, create sessions on the network and access information on the network. So our POP3 is going to work with our email application to receive those emails and to pull those emails down from the server. So our POP3 is going to be at that application layer. HTTP works with receiving and downloading web page information. So that's going to be at our application layer, because our browsers, our internet browsers, are an application. So they're going to be using HTTP, an application layer protocol, to talk through TCP, to talk through IP in order to get those, IP, those web page addresses. So let's take a look at that again. We have our HTTP protocol. So our, it's an application layer protocol. Our browser uses the HTTP protocol to go and to know how to format a packet to request a web page. That's why when we're looking at a URL, it's HTTP www whichever. So that HTTP lets our browser know you're going to try to get this packet via HTTP protocol. That HTTP protocol needs to know how it's going to be controlled. So the HTTP protocol knows how to coordinate um, information on a web server with a browser, but it doesn't have it, the HTTP, HTTP protocol doesn't know how to make sure that all the packets get there in the correct order, and doesn't know how to send and receive re, like uh, send and receive uh, read receipts. Doesn't know how to make sure that the packets get there. That's the job of our transport layer protocol, TCP. Our TCP protocol is going to work with HTTP in order to make sure that all those HTTP packets get there and get there in the right order. Now, TCP doesn't know how to route. TCP isn't in charge of assigning IP addresses and making sure that the packet gets to the correct IP address and doesn't know how to traverse a network in order to get where it needs to go. That's the job of IP. IP is in charge of creating those logical addresses and mapping those logical addresses to physical computers and then using those logical addresses to find paths through the internet to our web server. So the IP protocol does that. The IP protocol says, OK, this physical machine, this physical network interface card is going to be assigned this logical IP address. This logical IP address, I need to get there using my routing this way, using my routing protocol. So this is how I get there. TCP then says, OK, 
I know how to get there. I'm going to go ahead and send these packets and I'm going to format these packets in, the, in a, the correct way that I can send them and then the other side can reassemble them in the correct order. But I don't really know, other than disassembling and reassembling and verifying that these packets get there, I'm not really in charge of taking those packets, reading them, and then translating that into user, uh, user information. I'm not in charge of taking those packets and being able to read that binary and then transfer that onto what's on a user's screen. HTTP gets those packets and it says, I can do that. I don't know how to format packets. I don't know how to assign IP addresses to MAC addresses, but I can read these packets and I can translate that into what you see on your screen. So this is how our TCP IP, IP model, our suite, works with our OSI model. And this is why our OSI model is so important. Our OSI model lets us no, let's us visualize and let's us see how all of this works together. Let's us see how our TCP IP suite works together. And we see how our TCP IP suite works with all of these different protocols to be able to communicate and be able to send data around the world. It's not just connecting two computers with a wire. There's a lot more going on there. So we have our overview. We have our TCP IP suite. And we have our cool little chart here um, to help demonstrate how our TCP IP suite um, relates to our OSI model. Remember, our OSI model is our hypothetical model, uh, or not hypothetical, but it's our, um, it's our model that we come up with to better understand the different layers of networking. So we overlay that over our OSI model to get a better idea of how these all work together. So now that we have a better idea, now that we have our overview of uh, the TCP IP suite, let's actually dive into some of, let's dive into these individual protocols, see what they do, and we'll be able to better understand how they network and how they deliver packets across the, around the world.